Next season is the last for Frasier. Who was your favorite guest of all the different people that have been on the show? Well, Dr. Phil was great because I realized I like anyone who has less hair than me. So Really? Yeah. <laughs> David Hyde Pierce is an American actor and comedian. He is best recognized for his portrayal of Dr. Niles Crane on the television sitcom Frasier, which garnered him four Primetime Emmy Awards. Pierce has also made substantial contributions to Broadway, winning a Tony Award for his portrayal in the musical Curtains. However, he's recently been a mystery, with admirers guessing about his whereabouts for the past decade. The reason for this has ended up leaving fans shocked. Join us in this video as we take an intriguing journey down the rabbit hole to discover the truth behind Pierce's abrupt departure from screens. To understand what led up to this, let's first take a look at his early life. Early Life and Career Beginnings David Pierce, born on April 3, 1959 into a family brimming with dramatic talent, embarked on a journey that would eventually make him a household name. His mother, Laura Marie Pierce, may have worked as an insurance agent, but it was his father, George Pierce's aspirations to be a renowned Hollywood actor, that perhaps lit the initial spark of inspiration in young David. Being the youngest of four siblings, with Thomas, Barbara, and Nancy leading the way, David grew up in an environment that fostered creativity and the pursuit of artistic endeavors. In 1993, in a clever move to distinguish himself from another actor of the same name, David added Hyde as his middle name, thereby creating a unique identity for himself in the acting world. This decision was emblematic of Pierce's ingenuity and foresight, qualities that would serve him well throughout his career. His early forays into the world of performance were not just confined to acting. Pierce also showcased his musical talents, performing in Gilbert and Sullivan classics like HMS Pinafore at a local church, thus demonstrating his versatility as an artist. Pierce's educational journey took him from graduating high school in 1977 to the hallowed halls of Yale University. Initially enrolling as a music major, his passion for the arts saw him pivot to theater studies and English literature, disciplines that offered him a broader canvas to explore his multifaceted interests. Yale provided Pierce with a stage, both literally and metaphorically, to refine his craft. He immersed himself in the world of theater, taking on roles from director to actor, including a memorable performance as Princess Ida in a Gilbert and Sullivan production. This period was a testament to Pierce's commitment to his art, laying the groundwork for his professional career. Upon graduating from Yale with a Bachelor of Arts degree, Pierce ventured into New York City in 1981, ready to make his mark. The city, known for its unforgiving pace and competitive art scene, was both a challenge and an opportunity for Pierce. He juggled jobs as a security guard and a tie salesman at Bloomingdale's, all the while dedicating himself to improving his acting skills at Michael Howard Studios. His off-Broadway role as Laertes alongside Kevin Klein in Hamlet hinted at the potential that would soon be recognized on a larger stage. Pierce's Broadway debut came in 1982 with Christopher Durang's Beyond Therapy. Though this period included its fair share of struggles and uncertainties, Pierce's resilience and dedication to his craft were unwavering. His appearance in Norman Lear's The Powers That Be as Congressman Theodore in the 1990s, although short-lived, showcased his ability to captivate audiences and critics alike. It was this talent and perseverance that paved the way for his breakthrough role in Frasier. The show's producers, recognizing Pierce's exceptional talent, knew he was the perfect fit for the role that would eventually earn him widespread acclaim, the breakthrough with Frasier. Frasier was on the verge of obtaining a career-defining role in the early 1990s, shortly before Pierce withdrew from the screen totally. Frasier chose to develop the character of Niles Crane, his smart younger brother, due to his striking similarity to Kelsey Grammer, the brains behind the Cheers spinoff. Created specifically for Pierce to honor this amazing sitcom, it premiered on September 16, 1993, and for 11 seasons the entire globe was hooked to their televisions. There were no regrets. 
David Angel, Peter Casey, and David Lee contributed their creative genius to the show's development. With help from Gramnet and Paramount Network Television, the plot of Frasier, played by Kelsey Grammer, was inspired by the escapades of Frasier Crane, a radio presenter who returned to his hometown of Seattle. Pierce played his very intelligent brother Niles, and the late John Mahoney played his father Martin. Not to mention the outstanding supporting cast, which includes Jane Leaves as Martin's nurse, Daphne Moon, and Perry Gilpin as Frasier's producer, Roz Doyle. Frasier, on the other hand, completely revolutionized the game by winning both 37 primetime Emmys and Hearts. In addition, it won the Outstanding Comedy Series Primetime Emmy five years running. The good news is that Frasier Fever is still running strong thanks to the revival spin-off series Frasier, which premiered on Paramount Plus in October 2023. During the drama, Frasier was returning to Seattle and tried to rebuild his life after his marriage ended. However, when he had to care for his father, things became quite chaotic. Martin struggled to move after being shot earlier in the day. He then met Daphne Moon, an eccentric British caretaker who eventually became a member of the family. Of course, there's Eddie Martin's adorable, cheeky Jack Russell Terrier, but Frasier's interests extend beyond business. He was hosting the Dr. Frasier Crane Show, providing listeners guidance and humorous banter. And speaking of banter, his interaction with producer Roz Doyle was pure gold. They were the ideal couple, from their caustic quips to their love of coffee at Café Nervosa. The show revolves around the relationship between Frasier and Niles Crane, the brothers. Throughout the series, fans were delighted by their incessant disagreements and refined preferences. In addition, the plot was enriched with a slew of recurring themes such as familial bonds, romantic dramas, and the desire of acceptance. Pierce requested permission from the Screen Actors Guild to use his stage name, David Pierce, before the show's premiere. However, the Guild chose his middle name, lending a touch of elegance to his character despite his preferences. Pierce's performance was outstanding, earning him 11 Best Supporting Actor Emmy nods. He won the prize in 1990, 1995, 1998, and 2004. Diverse roles beyond Frasier. Before we take a look at the revelations that were made regarding David, let's take a look at the roles that may have influenced his choices. You see, critics were captivated by his exceptional physical comedic expertise and wit, which could cut through the tension in any setting. One brave reviewer did not mince words, comparing him to the famous Jack Benny and praising his ability to take the attention whenever he appeared on stage alongside the incomparable Kelsey Grammer. Pierce, however, was not limited to the brilliance of the small screen. He was a Hollywood star who continued to make waves long after the final curtain dropped on Frasier. His quest went beyond just being on screen, and he became a voiceover expert. Pierce left an unforgettable impression, transitioning easily from sharing scenes with Jodie Foster in the poignant drama Little Man Tate to giving gripping performances opposite the famous Anthony Hopkins in Nixon. With each job, he demonstrated a depth of acting talent that extended far beyond the confines of a sitcom, proving emphatically that his abilities should not be ignored. And let's take a look at his humorous chemistry with Ewan McGregor in Down With Love, a film that displayed Pierce's sense of humor alongside one of Hollywood's brightest talents. But the laughter didn't stop there. He voiced a slew of animated legends, including the brilliant Dr. Doppler in Treasure Planet, the lanky stick insect Slim in A Bug's Life, and the enigmatic Abe Sapien in Hellboy. Pierce's versatility was simply astounding, leaving audiences in awe of his insanely good range. But that's not all. Remember his amazing charisma on Sleepless in Seattle? Pierce took on the part of Meg Ryan's brilliant brother, a prominent professor at Johns Hopkins University, barely three months before Frazier made his legendary debut. This highlighted Pierce's numerous abilities. Let's not forget his iconic performance in the cult classic Wet Hot American Summer, where he stole the show as the hilariously ignorant astrophysicist Professor Henry Newman. His portrayal contributed a great blend of nostalgia and hilarity to the film, 
leaving lingering impressions long after the credits rolled. Let's take a journey down memory lane to the romantic allure of Sleepless in Seattle, in which Pierce not only appeared but also played Meg Ryan's brainy brother. He was a well-known professor at Johns Hopkins University, who added academic flair to the tale barely three months before Frazier's spectacular premiere. Moving on to the cult hit Wet Hot American Summer, set in the lively 1980s, Pierce played the charmingly ignorant astronomy professor Henry Newman. It was a summer camp comedy that brought equal parts nostalgia and belly laughs, highlighting Pierce's comedic ability. But Pierce's legacy extended beyond the big screen. His voice left an everlasting impression in animation realms. Pierce, who played the no-nonsense cold pill Drix in the animated comedy Osmosis Jones, added fun and character to the world of microscopic adventures. And here's a fun fact for Simpsons fans. In the episode Brother from Another Series, Pierce played Cecil, the brother of Kelsey Grammer's character, Sideshow Bob. It was a humorous homage to their Frasier days, bringing a sense of community into the animated universe. Not to be outdone in another episode, Funeral for a Fiend, Pierce reprised his role as Cecil alongside his Frasier co-star John Mahoney, who played Dr. Robert Terwilliger Sr., adding another layer of reunion enchantment to the animated universe. Pierce's skill set extends beyond acting. Beyond the screen, his voice takes center stage. In the 2002 audio tour Uncork, he served as the narrator of Napa Valley, guiding us through its magical marvels. Pierce also worked in animation, portraying Mr. Daedalus in Disney's Hercules series. His role as the evil emperor Zombie in an animated pilot for The Amazing Screw on the Head has been canceled, which is disappointing. Pierce's voice is well recognized in ads, whether advertising the Tassimo coffee system, narrating Seattle's Metro Transit, or luring us with the latest home furnishings from IKEA Canada. David Pierce's distinctive voice established a strong influence in the entertainment world, whether on the big or small screen, radio, or television. Despite his post frasier popularity, Pierce maintained a low-key personal life, but interest about him lingered personal life and coming out. David Hyde Pierce's journey in Hollywood has been marked not only by his incredible talent, but also by the courage and resilience he demonstrated in facing the challenges that came with the rumors and controversies surrounding his personal life. Beyond the initial speculation about his sexual orientation, Pierce's decision to come out publicly in 2007 was a significant moment in celebrity culture especially considering the time period when discussions about sexuality were still often considered taboo in many circles. Pierce's choice to share his personal life with the public brought him into the spotlight in ways beyond his acting career. It ignited conversations about the representation of certain individuals in the entertainment industry and highlighted the often intrusive nature of celebrity culture, where the line between public and private life becomes blurred. This move was met with a mix of support and backlash, with some praising Pierce for his bravery, while others criticized him for various reasons, reflecting the polarized views. You see, people's attitudes and involvement in his personal life most likely prevented him from performing on TV again. Pierce was asked about his dating experiences during an interview with TV Guide. To put it mildly, he responded guardedly. This prompted a lot of speculation about his sexual orientation. And you know what? It appears that the rumors were true. Like we previously revealed, Pierce eventually decided to come out in 2007, developing a partnership with writer-producer Brian Hargrove. Pierce and Hargrove's sexualities originally astonished each other as they admitted to being unaware of each other's orientation while friends. However, love unfolded in a unique way, resulting to their marriage in October 2008 in California, just before the state banned same-sex partnerships in 2009. Pierce openly expressed dissatisfaction with the following prohibition. The prohibition was lifted in 2013, but it was a difficult period for the pair. Pierce believed that coming out was the best move he could have made, considering the circumstances. He returned to musical theater shortly after Frasier ended, and the LGBT community welcomed him back. Pierce persevered despite the fact that being openly gay in Hollywood in the 2000s was difficult. 
He was most proud of his marriage with Hargrove. And guess what? They're still going strong today. Pierce created waves in the original cast of Eric Idle's Spamalot, a musical extravaganza inspired on the classic 1975 film Monty Python and the Holy Grail when he arrived on Broadway in 2005. Pierce played Sir Robin, a part invented by the man who penned the musical, alongside actors Tim Curry, Sarah Ramirez, and Hank Azaria. A year later, Pierce was still stealing the show on Broadway, this time in the musical curtains, which was written by John Kander and directed by Rupert Holmes. Pierce portrays Frank Chioffi in this murder mystery musical. Chioffi is a detective who dreams of being a Broadway star and is tasked with uncovering the murder of a leading lady on the first night. It's a significant part in Pierce's career, paving the way for the next chapter of his story. The pandemic gave him time to reflect. Amid the seismic shifts brought on by the pandemic, Pierce's life and career trajectory took a pause, offering him a moment to reflect on his journey, relationships, and the causes close to his heart. However, his life off-screen, especially during these introspective times, has not been without its share of rumors and controversies, which add layers to the narrative of his public and private persona. One area that has sparked interest and speculation is Pierce's activism and how it intersects with his professional choices. Known for his staunch advocacy for Alzheimer's research, Pierce's commitment to social causes has sometimes led to rumors about him turning down roles that conflicted with his personal beliefs or advocacy efforts. While no specific role rejections have been publicly confirmed by Pierce, his reputation for integrity and principle feeds into the narrative of an actor whose career decisions are as much about social impact as they are about artistic expression. Another aspect of Pierce's life that has been subject to rumors involves his interactions with fellow cast members and crew on various projects. In an industry where tensions can run high, Pierce has largely been regarded as a consummate professional. However, whispers of disagreements and onset disputes occasionally surface. It's important to note that such rumors have never been substantiated, and many co-stars, including those from Frasier, have publicly praised Pierce's work ethic and camaraderie. These accounts paint a picture of a man who, despite the pressures of fame, remains grounded and focused on fostering positive working environments. The pandemic itself was a catalyst for not just personal reflection, but also professional re-evaluation for Pierce. Rumors circulated about his reluctance to return to television in a post-pandemic world, reflecting a broader sense of uncertainty among actors about the future of the industry. However, Pierce's decision to participate in a Frasier reunion for charity during the pandemic hints at a more nuanced approach to his career, one that balances personal fulfillment with the opportunity to support meaningful causes. This event, in particular, seemed to quell some of the speculation about his hesitance to re-engage with the entertainment industry, showcasing his ongoing commitment to his craft and community. Broadway success and later career. Though opinions to the play were mixed, Pierce's performance as the lead in Curtains was undeniably outstanding. According to the New York Times, his performance here elevates him to Broadway stardom. Critics complimented his comedic timing and onstage chemistry, especially when he performed alongside fellow Frasier alums Edward Hibbert and Deborah Monk. Pierce was unquestionably conquering the Broadway stage like a pro, but was he even visible on any screens throughout all of this activity? Pierce quickly became very quiet about his abandonment of movies. His last notable part was in the tense thriller The Perfect Host, which he played in 2010. Pierce stars as Warwick, a dinner party host who is taken aback when Clayne Crawford's character, a fugitive, bursts into the gathering. You'd assume Pierce's character would be in for a crazy hostage situation, but things take an unexpected turn, and Crawford's character is eventually the one who faces the genuine horror. Despite Pierce's remarkable performance, the picture was not well received by critics. Critics loved Pierce's passionate and colorful performance, but they couldn't avoid pointing out a few story problems. The analyst went on to suggest that Pierce and other TV stars seemed eager to make the transition to the big screen. Furthermore, 
The New York Times was left perplexed by the inconsistent writing and strange story twists, even as they praised Pierce's acting abilities. But well, every performer experiences highs and lows. Pierce's talent was clear, even if the perfect host fell short of expectations. After that, Pierce's on-screen appearances grew less frequent. Pierce made a brief appearance in the 2001 comedy Wet Hot American Summer. This film has a wonderful ensemble cast, including Jenny Ayn Garofalo, Paul Rudd, and Amy Poehler, who deliver laughter. The entire setting is a satire of those cliched scenes from the last day of summer camp. Pierce portrays a local professor who is forced to teach the campers astrophysics because he has feelings for Garofalo's character. This is the unexpected turn. Despite earning little critical acclaim, the picture has since become an absolute cult masterpiece. However, Pierce did not anticipate it to be a great comic smash. Nonetheless, he had a great time working with his co-stars on set, which is why on the first day of summer camp in 2015, he jumped at the chance to reunite with the cast for Netflix's prequel series, Wet Hot American. Sure, his role was a little smaller this time around, but he still managed to steal the spotlight. Pierce has an even smaller role in the 10-year sequel series Wet Hot American in 2017. Director David Wayne told Vulture about Pierce's brief Skype cameo, stating that his demanding schedule prohibited him from joining the crew in person. They decided to go with it and film his scene directly from his flat, stressing that the entire event was going place over video chat. Pierce cranked up the drama on stage as his film and television performances came to a close. Let us fast forward to the resurrection of Labette, which is making waves in London's West End. Pierce, on the other hand, did not dabble in the theater scene. When the show debuted on Broadway, he stepped straight in. Pierce persisted and showcased his acting abilities. What do you think about David? Make sure to subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.